Hello everyone, my name is Jen. Welcome to my channel. I am beginning to believe the video gods are not with me today. <laughs> I keep getting interrupted. Um, anyway, we'll try this again. So welcome. Thank you for joining me today. This is a channel about the crafts that I get up to in central Alberta, Canada. I mostly dabble in craft stitch and crochet. I have to do card making. Uh, paper crafts. Today is mostly just going to be crochet and cross stitch. Today is Thursday, April 29th. And like everybody else, I can't believe how quickly the month has gone. You know, nice in one way when you're waiting for the nice weather to come, but at the same time you think, wow, what the heck happened? So I'm going to get started because somebody's supposed to come by for the windows and to do some measurements and I'm not exactly sure when he's going to get here so I would like to get this done and dusted before that happens. So normally I talk about my cross stitch first but today I'm going to talk about crochet because I don't have so much and then that will give my um, crochet viewers a chance to just see what I'm doing and then they can be on their merry way. I do have a small little crochet giveaway today and for cross stitch, I also have some past the stash if you're interested in that. So last time we spoke, I was working on, I had just started another shrug. So since that time, I actually haven't worked on that project at all. I just kind of fell out of love with it, mostly because of the problems I was having with the counting. And then I was also really focusing on a cross stitch project and trying to get that completed by the end of the month. So that I haven't worked on that. The April cowl I was working on just wasn't working out at all. I think I pulled it out four or five times and then I just decided, you know what? April can do without a cowl. I'm starting a shawl, so that that'll be just fine. And I did show you my April socks in the last video. So today I just have one thing to show you that I've been working on and it's, um, I'm calling it my birthday shawl because it was with yarn I got for my birthday from my son. So he had given me some Burnett Premium in this baby lilac and also Ferris wheel, as lime brand Ferris wheel in these beautiful spring colors. I don't know how well you can see that because the light's coming this way. And this one is called Cotton Candy. So I decided to make a shawl with that. And the pattern I picked is called the Dewdrop Wrap. And it is by Grace for the Frills. And this is what it looks like. So I made one of these before last summer. I made one in the same pattern. They're not huge, but that's okay. That's kind of how I like them. So this is where I'm at so far. Oh, I am so in love with this. I mean, just look at those beautiful colors. And I knew I wanted the Ferris wheel because that's the, you know, the variegated and the color changing yarn to be in the double crochet bits just so it would really show off the color changes. So I think it's just lovely. Now I had started one of these and I made a mistake and I had to stop. And so rather than pull it all out, I just started all over again. And uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the first little bit. It's probably, I don't know, maybe down to here. But I did have to buy another Ferris wheel because otherwise I'm going to run out. So there we have it. I just adore these colors. So pretty. I hope you can see those. And that's pretty much just what I've been working on. So like I said, not very much. It's going to be short and sweet for the crochet portion today. I just do this at night, maybe a row or two. This is just something easy and mindless and I love it. So I'm almost done. I think this will be my This has got to be my first cake. But anyway, so getting there. 
So plans, because it's almost March, so it'll be start another pair of socks and start another cowl. And I haven't bothered to um, pick out a cowl pattern yet. My sock pattern is always the same. It's just the yarn that changes. So in May, I'm going to try this yarn. It's Loops and Threads Perfect Pair. I haven't used this before. I know for knitting, it works up, you know, really nicely. I've seen knitters make socks from it, but with crochet, I just don't know. Uh, this one is quite a bit thinner than a lot of the sock yarns that I use, but I'm kind of looking forward to it. I mean, it's a little bit lighter and the colors are pretty. Might be a better idea. So yeah, that's uh, plans for May. And in my next video, I'll have more to show you about the stuff that I want to pick out. I've just been, like I said, I've been really focused on this cross-stitch project. So I haven't done a lot of crochet. And then I also got a new sewing machine, which is actually, I haven't even opened it yet. It came last week and it's still sitting out on my bench in the hallway. So it's because I know that once I open it and I start picking my sewing projects, there's going to be no crochet. There's going to be no cross stitch for quite some time. So I just want to sort of get some things wrapped up first. In my last video also I had said that I wanted to do just a little giveaway for my crochet viewers so it's just a little tiny one I made up some progress keepers or stitch markers so I have three of those to give away today so first up we have this pretty little butterfly and then I have one that says eat sleep crochet just a silver one. So these are about the size of, I don't know, maybe a dime. Yeah, it's about the size of a dime. So East Sleep Crochet, and then we have Crochet Queen. So if you were interested in, I'll say winning, but I guess it is winning, a stitch marker, just let me know in the projects below. Um, but tell me what you're working on because sometimes, you know, you have, you're spoiled for choice and then you can't pick something. So it's just nice to see what other people are doing and then you think, yeah, I want to do that too. So tell me what you're working on and uh, just let me know that you would like a stitch marker. And I will do the draw for that probably in about two weeks. And they're nice and flat so they should be able to go as letter mail. And that's all I have for Hook Talk today. So if that was all you're interested, thank you so much for dropping by, at least for that bit. And we will see you in a couple weeks, probably maybe three, I'm hoping. So yeah, just make sure if you want a stitch marker that you put your, um, you let me know before two weeks from today, just to be on the safe side. But okay, now let's move on to cross stitch. So first things first, I have a big finish <laughs> and this has been, this took up like most of my April, I finished Celtic Spring. So here she is. I was hoping to find a frame today. My daughter and I went thrifting, but no luck. So what can I say about Celtic Spring? I love her. I think she's beautiful. I am so happy I completed her. Now, obviously, I completely underestimated the amount of time it was going to take me to do things. And then once I finished stitching, I thought, well, I'll just take a break so I can work on my other projects before I start the beading. But I still wanted to get the beading done by the end of April. But then when I finished the stitching, I thought, well, I'll just start on the beading. So I think the beading maybe took me four or five days. Now, granted, some of those days were long days. Um, I... I like to bead. I do. But I knew this going into it. I don't like the beading on this project. So I just feel that it's too much. And I like I like the beading on the dress and in her bouquet and in her headband. 
And I think a little bit of beading around here is fine. However, I just felt that with the border and how much work the border was, and you heard me complain about that over and over, then to put the beads on, so I was actually starting to like the looks of the border, but then when, you know, then I started putting the beads on and then I didn't really care for it and I didn't really care for all the beads up here. So I just thought, well, I, I will continue as charted the way I'm supposed to do it. This is my first one. I do have all the other ladies and I can make changes to those ones. But for the first one, it's like trying a recipe for the first time. I like to just follow it as written. So let's see, I did make a mistake over here. It's not really a mistake, I just accidentally omitted some stitches. So I think it's this one, this medallion. Um, don't They don't look like they're supposed to, but by that time I said forget it. There's so much on here anyway, nobody's gonna notice. Now I do have plans, I did get an idea for my next lady that I will start that I will change the border. I will still put beads on, but the border is just going to be different. So anyway, she's finished. She's complete. I am, I'm happy about it. I think she's beautiful. It's, you know, my favorite colors. It's my favorite season. So I'm glad I finally got one done because when I started cross stitching, I felt, and I saw ads for these ladies in the magazines, I just thought they were so beautiful and I thought, you know, if I ever could get to the point where I stitch one of those, I will have arrived. So here I am. So there we go. So this has consumed most of my April, I would say. But anyway, now I have a better idea too of how, you know, long it's gonna take. So I'm, like I said, I'm still looking for a frame for that. I would really just like to find one frame and then switch the ladies out for the seasons because I don't want five of them up at the same time. And uh, let's see. Yeah, I may know conversions. I am part of that Facebook group, the Lavender and Lace Celtic Ladies Conversion. And holy cow. So I don't know how many of these ladies I'm going to convert. But I will say that going on to that site and looking at all of the amazing and beautiful conversions that people have done to their ladies totally kept me motivated to keep going because this border was really getting me down. And I was also feeling like I didn't want to stitch the other ones. So that um, Facebook group was a real project saver for me. And if you are a stitcher, and you haven't gone and seen that group, oh my gosh, it's just incredible. So that was my, that, <laughs> that was my big finish. So it wasn't my only finish. I did the blackbird stockings, but I showed those last time. And so I really, yeah, like I said, that was kind of my big um, focus for the month and I didn't get a lot of stitching done on other things but when I did finish I was very happy to get back to my rotation so let's see I finished her on the 23rd so that's just a week ago so once I finished her I had a new start and this was something I'd wanted to start on my birthday but I was busy so I finally got a chance to start this daffodil sampler now this is from the Mary Hickmitz New Stitches magazine and this just says issue 48. It was quite a bit older and in fact I believe I bought this magazine secondhand. But once I saw that I knew I wanted to stitch it and I've had this in my stash for years. And really I've just been, well I had a piece of blue Monaco and I thought okay that's exactly what I want to stitch it on. When I got the Monaco out, I realized it was too small. So I had to find something else. Now I had a piece of blue Ada that was the perfect color. I think it's called country blue, maybe light blue. But I was also waiting for a piece of Lugana to come. 
and because I I prefer to stitch on Lugana so the Lugana did come it's a 32 count and I started stitching on it and I don't know what it was I don't know if it's this or if it was just the day but I could hardly see the hole so I probably should have just stuck with the Ada that's my big start on it it's just part of the border but I'm just happy to be starting it because at least then I can be moving forward on it so the floss for this is mostly anchor and I have uh, pulled out what anchor I do have and then I'm subbing DMC and some of them I'm changing all together so in fact I actually am for the blues in the border I had to change them all together because what's called for didn't look anything like the picture and I, I really love the picture so there we go so I'm looking forward to getting you know, maybe a couple of medallions done this spring. Because if you ask me in the springtime what my favorite flower is, I will say daffodil, you know, hands down. But if you ask me outside of the spring, I, I have no idea because I like them all. Absolutely like them all. And I was finally able to get a few stitches back into my Leeds House sampler. This has been just hanging around for a long time. But on Sunday, I got this out and I managed to get some stitches in. So namely this and all of that. And this is with Sulky Threads. There was a thread pack for this at one point. I was never able to find it. I just had to order the Sulkies from uh, 123 Stitch separately, but that wasn't a problem. They're not discontinued or anything. And they're so pretty. And I really want this up in this house. So that's why I want to work on it. Because when you never know how long you're going to live somewhere, I was also able to get back to my Mill Hill Mondays. So I'm working on Moonlight Kitties. And I actually got quite a lot done um, this past Monday. I got this, you know, all of this done. And this is, I'm stitching this on blue Ada instead of the blue perforated paper. So it's 14 count navy. And when you're tired, Ada is such a pleasure to stitch on. And I don't know why I don't stitch on it more. But with all the kits that I have, that's, you know, will totally uh, fix that problem. Because I think with all the exception of one kit that I have, they're all Ada. But, uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to getting back to that on Monday. And I was even able to stitch on that late into the night, too, because you don't have to think about it. You just stab till you find the hole. And then the last thing I've been working on is my other new start for April, and it's Wreath of All Seasons by Dimensions. What I thought I would do is just in every season see how much of that part of the wreath I could get stitched. Because I'm definitely a seasonal stitcher. I would, have, I would not want to be stitching this part right now. I just want to be stitching this or maybe these colors. So I've made a small start on the spring. And I've done just a couple of days on this, so there we go. So just some of the, whoops, nice. <laughs> uh, just some of the Lily of the Valley. That's what I've been working on the last couple days. The Lily of the Valley, too. It's not my favorite, but I love it. And it totally reminds me of, okay, so if you've, been watching me for any length of time you know that I love France and I've been to France a number of times so in May there are five statutory holidays in France one of them is the first of May and it's basically like Labor Day so one time we were there we actually left on the first of May and we were somebody came over and she brought us a little bouquet of lily of the valley and she was explaining that it's this tradition that you give you know your friends uh, some lily of the valley on may the first it is may yes may the first 
So we thought that was really sweet, but we couldn't, I mean, we were just leaving, so we couldn't take it with us. And then as we were leaving the town, there were all these tables set up and people had buckets of Lily of the Valley and they were selling these little bundles, you know, for a euro or two euros. And it was so sweet just to drive through the town and see everybody walking and milling about selling Lily of the Valley. So we went to the Bordeaux airport and flew into Paris and then we would be coming home from Paris. But when we landed in Paris and as we got off the plane, there was somebody at the uh, gate and they were giving everybody a sprig of Lily of the Valley and I thought that was so sweet. So I stuck it in my book and I kind of smuggled it home, which you're not supposed to do because it's a live plant, but I did. And anyway, so this just reminded me of lovely May Day in France. Ramble on. And that's it for my what I've been working on. So what I want to work on, because May is coming, Stitch Mania. I don't think I did Stitch Mania last year, or if I did, it was Whip Mania. Because in 2019, I did Stitch Mania, and I started 14 new projects. And there are probably 11 of those projects still in their project bags that haven't been touched since 2019. So I'm a little leery about Stitch Mania. However, this year I thought I would like to participate again, but just kind of on a smaller scale. So I decided I would like to work on some sewing smalls. So as you can see, this is kind of my little stitchy, stitchy, stitchy wall. I have some things that I have done that are sewing related and my I've got all buttons and vintage notions in here and I collect sewing baskets and so there and there and when there's a pile of fat quarters I just got at Walmart because they were 50 cents each on clearance so if you haven't been there you better have a little looky-loo and yeah so I wanted to just stitch up some more sewing smalls So I just, yeah, now, sewing themed patterns. I have a lot. I have, bear with me here. So I have a binder full of sewing and quilting themed patterns. I also have this book. And this book, which is awesome. So it was kind of hard to decide what I wanted to do because, of course, I want to start them all, right? But I had to pick. So this is what I've come up with. Now, this is going to be kind of a fluid list. It could change as it usually does. So I had found, I have to fold this over. Sorry for the noise. This is from Cross Stitcher, February 2021. It was one of their little challenge pieces that they, you know, challenge designers. Snip and sew. I thought that was really cute. Now, I'm not going to say that should be a quick stitch because it won't be. You know, there's enough shading and back stitching in there that it's going to take me longer than I anticipate. But at least I know that, right? I love the colors and a little scissor charm. So that would be cute. I have my little sewing bag. And then I really want to start this one. Tra la la. Souris Balbine. And look at those cute little mice and all the pretty flowers and the little spools of thread. So I've had this for a little while, so I want to start this one. And I thought that would be cute up there. And I've noticed that they actually, uh, Tra La La has another one about mice in the sewing room. So I'm just waiting for that to come back into stock because I think that would be sweet as well. Now this one should be pretty quick. It's Silver Creek Samplers with Needle and Thread. No, it's called Stitching Feeds My Heart, sorry. 
and I thought I might do a little bit of a color conversion on that to more blues. That's really cute. I thought that's kind of doable as well. Then I have Heartstring Samplery Stitch or Die Pin Cushion. I thought this was so hilarious when I first saw it. So I would like to do this one. And I've just pulled some silk that uh, in colors that I like. So some of these are from like an oops pack. And then some of these are just leftovers. I thought that would be kind of cute. And then I have, uh oh, I have more than I thought I did. Okay, so this um, Antique Scissors and Spools, and that's from Shakespeare's Peddler. But I have this trim, it's kind of this turquoise and blue. Okay, that's just what the single strand of it looks like. So I bought this at a market in France and I have not known what to use with use it for. So I was thinking if I stitched this in, you know, these colors, and then I can put some of this trim on the bottom, I thought that might look kind of cool. And then it gives me a chance to use some of this. I mean, albeit it's gonna only be like five inches worth, but still. You know, that's another happy little memory. And I love the colors. I think they will go perfectly. So that was another idea. And then here's Blue Ribbon Designs under my wing. These are really cute. I bought these several weeks ago. And then just the other day, I was at Value Village and I got, so I got a jar with a zinc lid and then another zinc lid all the zinc lids were just sitting on the side because I think people were buying the jars, don't want the lids because they're not good for, you know, canning now. And they were just leaving the lids there. So I took the jar and the lid up and they just gave me the, she just threw it in the bag. So like, hey, that's pretty awesome. Win-win, I say. So yes, I will finish them pretty much like they're finished here. But I'm not going to put the ribbon around it because I really like the look of just the zinc lid. Um, anyway, and I might change a few things in there. What else? Okay, so this is such a beautiful book. I don't know if you can get this anymore. Mon Atelier by Veronique Anginger. And this is all sewing themed cross stitch patterns. Absolutely beautiful. I mean, like, look at this one. Look how pretty it is. So for Mania 2019, I had started this one. Yeah, that's it. So I had started this one, love the colors in it, and I never got back to it. So I would like to put a few more stitches into that because it's so pretty. I mean, just look at all those colors. Love that. Oh, and I feel like a kid in their Christmas list. I'm like, and, 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 and. And then <laughs> if I get a chance, I wouldn't mind starting this one. And I like the colors. I would just do it exactly as is. But I think I should finish the bobbin one first before I start another one. But that's really cute too. It was really, really hard to decide because, I mean, as you can see, I have a lot. And I mean, I have other French books too that have, you know, um, alphabets with, you know, sewing things in there. So we'll just have to see. I had to start somewhere. But that's, yeah, so those are kind of my very loose and fluid mania plans. Now I think it's, is it Kiralee? Kiralee from Stitching is Elementary. She She's doing a mania, which is, she's calling it Sewing Bee. So she wants to do some sewing um, pictures, projects for her sewing room as well, but she also wants to do some bee things. So I had initially planned on doing that as well, but I have so many sewing things 
and I was planning on doing some bee themed stitching in June. Yeah, I think June. So that I'll just do the sewing ones this time around. And oh my gosh, that's it. So I can't believe I did that in 30 minutes. Now, I guess the last thing to talk about is pass the stash. I've got three patterns to pass along today. The other pass the stash, everything's in the mail, is gone out. So for the people who won those ones or whose names were drawn, I kind of hate to say one because these aren't like brand new, new things. These are, you know, it was like stash I'm passing along. But anyway, you can uh, watch your mailbox for those. So this time around, I have another lavender and lace. I have um, a bird one. I'm just going to show you. All right. So if you are interested in any of these, and I'm just mailing these in regular envelopes. They just go as letter mail. They're just going to come as is. One of them is in its original packaging. One of them has kind of shelfware, just so you know. So I would like you to tell me what you're working on and if you're going to do mania or not, because I just love to hear what everybody else is working on. And then, so yeah, leave me a comment telling me what you're working on or if you're doing mania or, you know, anything. And just tell me which one you would like to stitch. So the first one actually wasn't mine. I was in the thrift store last week and looking through a bunch of charts there. So I saw this one. I'm never going to stitch it, but I know there are a lot of people who like to stitch these. And you know, good for you because I'm looking at the chart on this one and holy cow, it's just not going to ever happen here. So this is a Teresa Wensler and it's the English Garden Sampler. And this is what it looks like. Now this one does have a little bit of shelf wear, but I've been smelling it and it doesn't smell like basement or anything. Yeah, it's fine. So there is the cover is just like a tiny bit bent here, but I had a look at the chart and you know, with the exception of some yellowing just at the side of the pages here, it it's in pretty good shape. So yeah, good luck to you if you can stitch this because it's beautiful, but I'm certainly never going to do it. So, English Garden Sampler. I hope people are still going to want that. I don't know. I think I gave away a Teresa Wensler a couple years ago. And yeah, there were people interested, so. Okay, so the next one up, this is kind of springy because a lot of babies come along in the spring. So this is Lavender and Lace and... This is called Sweet Dreams, another beautiful, beautiful pattern that I just adore, but there are just so many things to stitch. This will not make my list. Isn't that cute? And again, look at that dress. Holy cow. Just gorgeous. And that sweet little baby. Oh my gosh. I think he's got red hair, which of course changed to whatever you want. Yep, he's a little ginger baby ginger haired baby. Okay, so um, lavender and lace, you can just say I'd like to stitch lavender and lace or, you know, sweet dreams, whichever. I'll, there's only three here, I'll figure it out. And then the last one, I, I had set this aside to give away and then I was looking it up and I thought, no, I'm going to keep this one because it's so pretty. But no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass it along. So it's called America's Feathered Friends. It is a chart from Lenart by Marilene Bastine. Isn't that nice? So look at all these other beautiful ones in the back. I had this one. I bought it at a thrift store and then I foolishly got rid of it because I thought, oh, I'm not into that anymore. I'm not going to stitch that. I'm a dummy. There's just some things you just shouldn't ever, ever give away. And then this one, oh my goodness, isn't that beautiful? Seasonal bouquets. Yeah, if I ever found that at the thrift store, I'd snap that up. And I probably wouldn't pass along. <laughs> I wasn't greedy like that. 
Okay, so anyway, uh, this one is also in pretty good shape, and I just looked at it, so now i got to look at it again. Oh, yeah. And this one is actually divided up, so no part of the chart is actually all, um, the crease doesn't go over any part of the chart, so that's good. So yeah, tell me what you're working on, and tell me if you want to stitch this one. So like my crochet giveaway, I'm um, probably got about two weeks from today. I don't know if I'm going to do another video in two weeks, but at least, you know, try to get it, your um, comment and which one you want to stitch in the next two weeks. And I will do the draw for that before my next video. So I will, if I draw your name, I will leave a comment with your comment and then in my next video I will uh, let you know then as well so that you can give me your address and I can pop those in the mail for you. And I think that's it. I feel like I've been talking super quickly and plus then I know that the window guy's coming and I'm looking around here and he's got to come in this room. I'm thinking I should probably just go and clean up. There's not a ton of I don't know, life update going on around here. You know, same old, same old, which is good, which is which is really good. The older you get, the less exciting you want your life to be, really, because you know what excitement is. Anyway, thank you so much for visiting me today. Uh, don't forget to leave me a comment. Tell me what you're working on, and if you want to stitch any of those things, or if you are interested in stitch marker. And... I will see you later. So, um, yeah, I put my Instagram in the in the description box. You can always maybe message me there as well, or my email. I'm not really. I'll, I'll occasionally check Instagram. I'm just not on it as much as I used to be because I would rather be stitching or doing something else. I was just finding it to be too much of a time waster. Even though the people that I follow on social media and all the things that I belong to on social media are crafty related, so generally pretty inspiring. But still, I could be doing my own inspiring things. Okay, now I am really rambling. So again, thank you so much for visiting. I will see you in a couple of weeks. Love your stash and happy spring. Happy days, friends.